So yeah, look, we're gonna go ahead and we finna go ahead and jump into because I wanna hear this conversation, man. Welcome to the Monsterpreneur Podcast. Y'all already know I'm your boy Trek, man. Man, we got a couple of couple of dope people in the building. My boy got KP in the building, Yoski in the building, Jay Famous in the motherfucking building. You know what I'm saying? Now look. Uh, if you're new to the kind of the, the channel, like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. I'm trying to get to this because this, this conversation I've been waiting to have for a very long time. Trendsetter. Appreciate that. Uh, Trailblazer. Appreciate that. Uh, Gangsta Pat in the building, by the way, y'all. What it do, what it do, man. Black Haven's finest. For sure, for sure. Other than my, I got to put myself in there. I'm a Black Haven nigga too, but I, I model myself after after watching cats like you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Man, I want to go into it immediately where you want to go into it. And it's, you know, it's, it's the origin story. Right, right, right. Because right, if people right. don't know, you are credited with being the first Memphis rap artist to sign a major record label deal. Right, right, right. Uh, but before that, right. take me back there. Because I'm a student, so I'm just going right. to smoke this blunt. You going to hit this motherfucker with me? <clears throat> of course. Of and course, then we going to just have this conversation. Go ahead. Right. And check this uh, out. Man. But, you know, back in the days, I have to I have to give credit to those who were there before I came on the scene. And that was people like Spanish Fly. Spanish you know, Spanish Fly, Fly was kind of like a DJ and a rapper. He was a DJ, but he had songs of his own. Right, right? Yeah. You know, so he was, he was there before I was. He was one of my inspirations locally. You know, I had to inspiration from people like Run DMC, LL, you know, Curtis Blow, but then you had that local inspiration, the people that really made you feel like, hey, I can probably do the same thing. I can probably get in this shit for real, because look what they doing. Right, right. So you had Spanish Fly. I know all the guys back then that were existing because I was a student of them. I right. studied them. Spanish Fly, W. Del, Frankie D, mm -hmm. Yoshe, Tony Tyler, um, you had the walk home B boy, you know what I'm saying? You had this group called Mem Fresh, M Team. I mean, it was just Memphis had a lot of different, and all of them had their own style. It was so colorful. Yeah. Then you had this group from New York that used to come to Memphis called the King Tubby Posse. Right. They had like two DJs. They had real 1200s and big. They had all the stuff Run DMC had, but they just wasn't as famous right, right, as right. Run DMC. So when they come to that part, man, I know all the history of them of the Memphis rap scene because I was a student of it and I studied it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pretty Tony, you know what I'm saying, was around Shout back then. Tony. Yeah, 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 North Memphis, man. So, I mean, it was a lot of rappers, but I was the first one to actually get a deal as a rapper and right, have a right. video on TV, have songs playing on the radio. Now, before the, before the deal, and we get into that part, like, right. what was the scene like then and who were the, who were the, the names of Though, those that were coming up at the time, oh, the ones that had more of a prominent. Oh, it's a it was, long list, but I, I'll try to remember everybody I can. Uh, without without disrespecting anybody, because right, you know, right, people right, get right. mad, you leave their yeah, names yeah, out. I know, I know. We I'm apologize for now. Right, yeah, put a disclaimer there. We, please, any please names left out? It's been a while. You know, I, okay, I'll say. Um, Back then, the scene was, you know, of course, A Ball, MJG, they was right, around. Right, right. Tila, yeah, you had. Um, Tila, that's yeah. my Yeah, Paul and Juicy wasn't, they hadn't formed 3 6 yet. I think they were like the serial killers or something like that. <laughs> yeah, because it was Paul and, and Ricky. Before the Like Lord, right? right. Yeah, we okay. used to be a group together. Me, Paul, and Lord was trying to put a group together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was before the 3 6 days. Uh, you had Homicide, you know, Zerk and Squeak, of course. They were putting out mixtapes back then before they formed their on labels and stuff like that. Yeah. FM, uh, shoot, man, it's, it's a lot of people, Freak man. Freak Master. Uh, Freak Master, yeah, that's my that's dog. Uh, you had this guy named Cody Mac, mm -hmm. who was actually one of the first guys who were really triple tongue. That style that Lord Elfman was doing, right, style right, I right, did right, on right, that right, verses, right. it go back, like, past us. Yeah. To this guy named Cody Mac, he was he was one of the ones that was triple tongue before anybody. So like, y'all hear that, right? Yeah, yeah, Cody Mac, that he a legend, man. Uh, he go back, cause like DOC was kind of touching on a little bit mm -hmm. with his, Most definitely. you know, like World Weird Period, me and them songs like that, we was, but Cody Mack was kind of a consistent, he was, honestly, he kind of reminded you of Bone a little bit before. Oh, there was a Bone. Cause he would flip long like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I ain't, he ain't really put no harm in it, but them long extended flip to keep the line going, and he was notorious for Hey, that, did you man, participate so. in the Memphis fuck, fuck Bone? Nah, that, nah. that didn't have nothing to do with me. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I didn't just have a random problem. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just nah, a random question. That didn't have nothing to do Because, you know, me. all Memphis niggas was like, man, you know, yeah. fuck my own thugs right. when that but whole see, thing hit. This is the thing a lot of people don't know. 
I almost had a deal with Easy before Bone did. Okay. See tell what us, I'm tell saying? Us. I want to hear right. about Well, this is the thing. A lot of people don't know that my sister-in-law was married to one of the original, original back in the day NWA members. Like that's my brother, ex-brother-in-law. Which wow. That's my little niece's father. Now he played drums for Miss Chalet and wow. a lot of other groups that Rufus were working with. He was also on tour with them. So wow. there have been times where he was in time with me and he would be picking up the phone, hitting up Dre, and I'm just lit. That's why, I, if you notice on my Facebook, I got a picture with a Rufus jacket on. It's a Miss Chalet Bank Russell tour jacket. Right, right, right. That's how I got that jacket, through him. See what I'm saying? So I've been in the room where he picked up the phone, he calling people from NWA, chopping it up with him, you know, but, and plus, Plus, he actually sent some of my music, Dre. He actually listened to it, but it's like, he, he had a list of people so long, man. It's like, you damn near got to give up your career to get in line to work with him, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, Definitely I ain't wanna, one of my influences. Yeah, a lot of, I hear a lot of artists that have signed to him complain about they never got a chance can't get, to. Can't get with right, him. so I didn't want to take yeah, myself to with him. Yeah, I got a partner, real close partner. Right. Uh, got a cousin, his name John Connor. Right. He been over there after that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Dre pulled him out on a couple of things. And I guess Dre be like, nigga, figure it out. Nigga, I just pulled you out. Right. Figure it out. But yeah, niggas, well, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But yeah, keep going. I want to. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this, um, now, what year is this? Because I oh. see on uh, 91 is pretty much the the year that you dropped your first album. <coughs> yeah, this was. This, this was, was way before then. <coughs> well, actually, my album, had, I had just got that deal with Atlantic. When I was when I was when I when he was trying to send send my stuff to Dre, I had just got that Atlantic situation going. You know so when you saying? dropped your first album, you was a signed artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already I signed with an independent record label called Good to Go Productions, right? Okay. That was first. Right. Then the CEO of that label got killed. I was in the car with him when he got murdered. Matter of fact, I got shot in the head just like Suge Knight got shot. You know where you told me the story. Right. Before. He got killed just like Tupac got with they was in the BMW and we was in the bed. They was on the Vegas Street. We was on Bill Street, you see what I'm saying? So that was the first CEO. Then that's when Reginald Boylan came in after he got killed. Reginald Boylan came in and started OTS. He was with GTG, Red started OTS. Right. So it went from OTS to Joy Boy Records. Joy Boy came in and took my mask, bought my mask. I don't know how they did that negotiation, but they got my masters and it was through Joy Boy that I got the Atlantic distribution. You know what I'm saying? Because one of the guys that worked for Joy Boy, he knew my father. Oh, this dude named Rod Kennedy. Right. OG, cool as hell. He used to walk around with a pad on his shoulder, man. Anybody that was I back in the day. Told me that. Yeah, anybody told me back that. in the day knew Rod Kennedy, man. Real dude, man. A period of his yeah, life. Yeah, him and my father were tight, so. That was one of my next points. Your your father. Right, right. Tell right. us a little bit about Mr. Willie Howard. Oh man, uh because he's a legend in his own right. Yeah, he is. He is, man. Uh he he what's amazing about my father, man, is like he wasn't no record exec or nothing like that. He did all of what he did strictly by playing drums. He played his way into them spots. As a kid, he reminded me of myself. It's a trip how you follow your parents' footsteps without even trying because he used to go up to Stack Studio, cut school, go up there, stand in front of when the school bus coming through so the kids could see him, right? And what y'all doing up at Stack? Oh, we got some men going on the line, flogging. But when I was growing up, I did the same thing. I used to cut Sherwood and go up to Good to go studio and wait till he come there and somebody go, oh, I seen you up in that building, what was you? Oh man, yeah, I got a little record deal coming on. Did your dad ever find it was coming to school? Nah, 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 hell no. Nah. If, if, he, nah. if he caught you hypothetical, would he have been like, I'm gonna beat your ass? Hell like, yeah. yeah, I did the Shit same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still, he never stopped being So he wouldn't have been like, nigga, I did the same thing. Nah, it's a parent, man. <laughs> that shit wasn't gonna work. <laughs> He's like, oh man, you know what, son? Right, right, I used right. to cut school and go nah, to the labels right. all the time. Nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He respect the hustle and the dream chasing, but nah, you gotta do what we tell you. Right, right, right. You, you young, you could have got hurt. You know, the parents right. gonna be parents, but so, our paths were similar, man. You know? So let's go, let's go back to the West Coast thing, cause um, you know, uh, the stories that I've always heard was like, you know, I seen pictures and shit too. Right. You know, tour. With NWA. Well, it was Ice Cube when he did his solo. Still. Two okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. correct me, yo. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, sir. You right, you right. God damn. You right, you right, yeah. So, yeah, you're yeah. Like, what, what the hell was that about? Uh, well, you know, Q had Yo-Yo through Atlantic, mm -hmm. right? So, okay. they came here for a show, and we opened the show up at the Cook Avengers Center. You know what I'm saying? We, they with Atlantic, we with Atlantic, we clicked. 
Hey, let's, let's see if we can get some more dates. Right. All that such and such, you, you know, got a few more dates. But Too Short is also a real good homie, you know what I'm saying? So, right, shout out to Short. Yeah, I've done a few dates with Bitch. Short too, man. Yeah, that's my dog right there. But I'm going to tell you something. His brother, Wayne Loke, a lot of people may not know Wayne Loke, but that's that's the dog right there, bro. <laughs> that's who you want to deal with, Wayne Loke. Short cool. that's my dog with Loke. Loke's right. the dog, you know what I'm saying? Right. Everybody, everybody that know Short know Wayne Loke. That's his older brother, yeah. so. Shout out to Wayne Lowe, man. But yeah, West Coast rappers embraced us back then. New York rappers was kind of that South shit country. Yeah, they still Not all like, of them, but most of them. They still kind of like that now. Yeah, yeah, they still, still like boy. I'm going to tell you somebody who was humble, Red Man, though. Yeah, Red Man was I've, real humble. I've always heard that about Red Yeah, Man. we did a show with him in uh, Ohio. And yeah. we was kind of hesitant about going out because they were like all hip hop or backpackers. We sitting up there with Curl. To my cousin and shit, and he was like, man, fuck that, you gotta go out there. I don't care if it's two motherfuckers, do your show. You came in and do it, he boosts us up. So, man, we had our skull count with our curl tucked in. Take that shit off, man, be yourself, man. We like, fuck. When I did and did our thing, man, you know. So when Al, Al Capone was here, I said something about Jericho, he got mad because he told me, correct me, he told me it was a new Nouveau. Home. Yeah, that's, that's definitely. <laughs> People with Nouveau's don't want to be mistaken. Because <laughs> Nouveau costs more than, it's a more of a process. They don't disrespect it's like, you. It's like, my, it's like yeah. my nigga with this iPhone shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, my nigga right. just like, damn, they determined it's gotta be an iPhone. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, yeah, back, that was a big name because Nouveau, you, you didn't want nobody saying you had no jail. So check this out. We talking about late 80s, early in the career, early 90s. Right. This is in the time of, uh, of the parental advisory and censorship wars, right? Right, right? When y'all was first making y'all set of records, y'all was having to make them without the parental advisory sticker? Or was you making records and did that come right soon after or when you got in it was just already? Well, back then, as like? an artist, we didn't really get into the press in a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like. We didn't really know as far as the sticker and stuff. I'm sure they had it on my Atlantic product. So niggas was just cussing out. on the records anyway. Yeah, they was cussing on the records anyway. I think when major labels got it, they had to stick the sticker. But I don't know if independent artists were required to. Because I remember some cases where the stores had a big roll of stickers. So I guess if a tape came in and it didn't have it, they could just take it and put it on there right, right. from the sticker roll. Right, so. Right, right. I think it depends on who you were signed with, how big of a budget you had. Right. You know, because I think if they knew your shit wasn't going nowhere, it don't matter what's on it, just gonna <laughs> sit on the shelf. It ain't gonna make no noise anyway, so. What do you think the miss, the biggest misperception about Memphis, Memphis' role in hip hop period? Yeah, hey, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a big misconception. And, and we get overlooked a lot. Like, we ain't never been honored in the VH1 honors, but yet our artists have rule the damn, you know, the, the industry yeah. for years, you know what I'm saying? Our style been number one in the industry for how long now? Long they time. still using it, so yeah. we get overlooked a lot. And I just think, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I just, I just think because we kind of, Nick, look how big Texas is, yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, we yeah. we kind of in the midst of Texas, St. Louis, you know, I think it, it has to do with where we sit. We're around a lot of shit, Florida down at the bottom of us. Could be location, I don't know, but I know Memphis is a music mecca of the world, man. You know what I'm saying? You got some of the coldest musicians and singers in the world that came out and then came through Memphis. So I just don't know why we get overlooked, man. The only ones. Right. The, the, the ones that they tell the stories of. Right, right. All yeah. come back to him. Right? And, 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 or, or had to make sure they made it a destination on their motherfucking map. Right, they had right. to be here. Because what's know? going on in Atlanta, how did that not happen in Memphis, bro? How did that boom that Atlanta had didn't happen in Memphis? Uh, I don't understand it. I got, I have a, KP likes to call them conspiracy theories. Right, right, right. But you know, um, and it's really kind of simple. Like, you know, Memphis is the distribution capital. Right. It's always been that way. The boats, right. trains, the planes. Right, right, right. right. And uh, this got to be the city where they offer the warehouse jobs because we need y'all doing it. Right, right. And right. we all know that's the lowest pay grade. It's right. the lowest set of jobs in the world right, right, is the, right. when people when you go to New York City and other places they're like yo the factory workers they're talking about the niggas at the ports and shit right those right. Are, those are people but it's important shit that happens right, right those right. people have to be paid the lowest wages to run it because they got to keep it coming it's always 12,000 motherfuckers at FedEx every night right that's true whether you know whether the, the truck run your ass over and splat you you get right. you going to news right. they just go hire another motherfucker immediately Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's my just theory of right. why things have right. to be compressed. Right, right. 
right, they can right. you can drain the knowledge and the information. The producers right. made all our producers had to run off to Atlanta, and other places like that. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this always been a topic of conversation. You know what I'm saying? But uh, what do you think about the, the the new blossoming of what's going on now with Memphis and all the light that's been getting in the game recently? With, like uh, Glorilla. And, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a good look for the city, man. I'm 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 always glad to see my people advancing and progressing, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's daytime, man. We had our time. It's daytime, you know. Yeah. I don't have to agree with everything I see going on, but as long as people eating and they, you know what I'm saying, yeah, they, they successful, yeah. and it gives and, and her success is going to open the door for some other yeah. artists. Yeah. Right, so. They can see my, I like to, uh, like to look at it like this. Like, we know uh, it takes what you, you, I, and Al's, and Blacks, and Chats, and our generations, the ones before us, each right. one of us broke down a set of of walls. Right, right, right. right so right. the next one could climb up. You know right. what I'm saying? But it is our responsibility. It's the reason why I like to have conversations like this right. with all the OGs. Because right, like, right, right. I'm, uh, you know, a participant in the game, right. a student and a teacher of the game. Right. And I always follow John Nickers. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And I'm going to take it back to <coughs> Deadly Verses. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What the yeah, fuck? Man. What's your uh, mindset? Man, Deadly. And were you living in White Haven then? Uh, I was back and forth. I was in Atlanta and kind of in the Haven. Kind of back and forth. Black motherfucking Haven. Yeah, yeah. I was taking Haven nigga to Atlanta, man. You know what I'm saying? Bringing Atlanta nigga to the Haven, man. This I was crazy. back and forth, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was some there was some good times though. I ain't gonna lie. As far as being in the rap game, there was some great times. And yeah. that record that record walked on its own a lot. See, I never had a promotional budget from no label. When Atlantic signed me, they signed me as one of the groups that they was gonna throw up against the wall. And if it, it stuck, stuck, it's stuck, cool. If it fall, we actually we didn't even stay on that label. I don't think three months, bro. We got kicked off going through the same shit for the next <laughs> two times going through. Shooting up show, getting the money from the promoter, had to shoot your way out the motherfucker yeah. because niggas can kick the dough in in the back of the club trying to rob. They want that bankroll, cause we done had we done been in that position too, and we end up getting kicked off the label for that shit, bro. Wow. Yeah, we. As a matter of fact, we may have got so crazy we got to fight with a whole auditorium full of school kids, bro. <laughs> I bullshit you not. It was the craziest what shit ever in been? my life. This was in Fair World. <laughs> Fair word. <laughs> Fair I'm talking about the whole, the whole I know this crowd. Man, I know what the fuck you talking about? Fair so. word, cause we got to fight with the whole gym. We in there trying to do a show. How the fuck is this? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it short. We in there trying to do a show, right? They let some one of their little local rappers open up the show, and I guess. They done gas him up to diss me. I guess that's how he was gonna make a name for himself. So I'm, I'm he out there rapping. We like, we cool, you know, do your thing, young cat. Then all of a sudden at the end of his set, he turned around and looked at me and said some shit on the mic and told me to come on. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know if he talking rap or he wanna fight. I don't know what. I'm right. young, you know, we young and wild, so ready to go. You heard right. me. Right. So me being a young out of listen, I grabbed a mic stand. You remember from heavy mm -hmm. mic stand with the heavy bass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of put it right there in his face, like, my nah, bust your. And then before I could put it back down, it's, I just heard this rumble. <laughs> Don't fall one Bro, we looked up the whole Don't fall go. <laughs> so it was this, it was this room right here with all the gym equipment. Right. So I grabbed the chair, and my guy grabbed the crate. Mac 10 grabbed the Mac 10, well, I'm gonna tell you, Mac 10 was the only person that came by my side. Everybody else stepped away from me like they weren't with me. Oh, he was man. the only one. He grabbed a crate. He seen me pick that chair up, he grabbed a crate. And so as they run and close, we bagging up. So I swung the chair, he swung the crate. All you hear is knuckles hit the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, we gotta get the fuck out of here. They gonna kill us. Bro. So we strike out to the to the little the gym room, right? <laughs> so they own us. Like they they would have had us if 10 wouldn't have played like he had a pistol. 
Yeah. They were they right at the door. He did this right here. And them niggas bagged up. Ooh, they bought us enough time to get in that door and close that motherfucker lock. But when we did that, them niggas kicking the hinges out the door. Boom! Boom! I'm talking about we see the hinges. I said, man, that motherfucker finna break. So it's some volleyball nets in there. We breaking the rods out there, motherfucker. So we back to back, man. As soon as that door come down, cause we gonna have to swing fire light. Ain't nowhere else to go. All of a sudden the kicking stopped. You hear whistles blowing. <laughs> Coaches and shit. Get back in y'all seat. Get back in y'all. Man, they broke that shit up, got them young niggas out of control, bro. That's it, man. That shit crazy, the motherfucker. That's a crazy story. You, this is you doing, huh? This is you bro, doing a rap, rap show. That was the Omni Gangster day. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm the, saying. Yeah. So, so this is the type of shit that's. That, bro, we we that, dealt with that. I seen some of this shit coming in, uh, coming up. And of course, we kept up what was going on, so right. they could pop it up at shows and shit. And, right. And so I experienced some of this shit. You know, like I tell Al the same thing. Like, right. bro, I was a nigga. I was a nigga, and they're looking at that shit like, man, I'm fucking with her turning the deep fuck up. Yeah. That's the type yeah. of energy that was coming. You know what I'm saying? Oh like, man, you you gotta look at it, bro. I got gangster in front of my name. Yeah. I remember we did a show at Mississippi <laughs> State Valley. We shot that motherfucker. We had to. <laughs> we had to, bro. Them niggas from the town, our motherfucking ass from the wall. One of those little walls. They oh had their gang down there. And I think them niggas were anti gangster anything. Yeah. So we doing we doing a show with Tony Terry. And Tony, you remember Tony Terry? Yeah. Mr. Went on with you. Yeah. He he old. Us nigga, right? We say this ass, they were gonna kick his ass too. <laughs> and he was an RB nigga, you know what I'm saying? RB nigga. Yeah, he yeah. old us, cause we say this ass, so we on stage all while we on stage, these niggas threatening, yeah, hey, nigga, I doing all this shit, you know, the whole <laughs> thing like that. I'm like, okay, we did our little show. So after the show, we rush <laughs> off stage. Now you got man, I got my mom and daddy down here with me. Oh bro. shit! It's family down here, so it's a little more serious than just a bunch of niggas. If it was right, a bunch right, of niggas, right, yeah, right. we can rumble, okay. But I got family down here. I'm gonna end up killing one of you motherfuckers about my gun. You touch my folks, bro. I promise you somebody gonna die down here. Right, 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 right. So right. I'm telling, I'm trying. I don't want to tell them what's going on because I don't want them to panic and get scared mm. and shit. So I'm like, y'all, we got to get out of here fast. We got to get back to Memphis fast as we can. So they want to kick it and hang out. We got to roll, man. So them niggas done went outside and surrounded our little mo, bro. Oh, yeah, man. they got to come get in these cars. Yeah, we got something for these niggas. So. Ten come get me like, man, we don't go out there now, bro, we gonna be stuck. We gotta go out there now and get these folks in the limo and get the fuck out of her. I'm like, damn, let's go. Fuck it, man. So we walk out. I got a pistol, he got a pistol. I'm, I'm sorry, I wanna it's see this. It's a security this. guard out there standing by a truck, right? He got a big ass pistol on this, so we like, okay, we got the security guard. We don't know if he gonna shoot. These niggas standing around our limo, we can't leave. You know what I'm saying? We done got our money from the promoter and shit. Right. We ready to go. So boom, we gone out there. You know what I'm saying? So ten, but like, who, who's one of y'all niggas looking for gangster pet? Oh, here they come, got it around, big and bad. Man, he had a three for the seven. He pulled that big long, it looked like it was in slow motion. He pulled that big long motherfucker out of fire that bitch over there here. Boom! That shit was so loud, them niggas struck out running. So now it's the Hall of Night scene, cause I got a little 25. I pulled that motherfucker out. Down, down, down. Little, little bitch, little bitch ass pistol. Shoot that little shit. I shoot that little shit. So he find that big boom, boom. So we tell them, come on, let's get in the car, they running, they running. Boom, my mom, I got my mom and dad running to the car, dog. Like, we had that fine right. shot. Got them in the limo. <laughs> got Tony Terry and them, made sure they was straight. Got them, they peeking all out the door. They scared the motherfuckers. Got them out of there. So we pulled down the street to a gas station. Everybody just, we trying to get gas, you know, the gas station closed, though, so we like, we gotta get the fuck out of this motherfucker, mm -hmm. so we chopping up niggas, thank them, man, we appreciate y'all. Y'all wouldn't went out there and did that, they would've had us, bro. So that we like, yeah, crazy. but that ain't, the, that man, it's so many accounts of that, but see, I felt like, at a period of time, I ain't gonna say the record company, I believe certain people that work for the company was trying to set me up for some shit, because why would you book me, they booked me in, I think it was Ohio somewhere, something like that. And they booked me in a club full of Vice Lord. I'm Gangsta Pat. Why would you book me in an all Vice Lord club, bro? Like these niggas, so I'm talking about that. You really think they set that up? Like I that? think they set that up. Because I, I, I believe in that shit. I, I see, think I, they I, set that up. I see it. I see it. I think they set that up. So we get there. It's a sea of red, bro. A sea of red. Mm. I'm like, damn, shoot. Luckily, though, luckily, though, we won them niggas over, though. We still bump. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I don't care what you represent. Niggas love music. They love you. Man. You bumping, they gonna fuck with you. I don't care if you represent something they don't like. If you bumping, they'll give, they'll give you a minute to shine. And they'll be like, 
Damn, that nigga ain't gonna get up there and he keep, keep doing this shit. Right. All right, fuck. Right. All right. He see us. He, he, he see, see us. us. He know the beat. I let him know. I see y'all. I ain't say no more. I know where I'm at. Yeah, I let him know. Sometimes I see it be about respect. Yeah, yeah. That's real shit. Hey, That's something up. that a lot of people don't know, and I read this, and I was like, I, I came to realize it later on in my career after following you, but you played all the instruments on a lot of your shit. We talking about guitar, bass, and everything. Right, 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 right. Is it, where did you get that from? Well, that's because pops, you know what I'm saying, used to leave instruments at the house. You know what I'm saying? Like guitars, drum set. He had a whole drum set set up in my bedroom. Like The drum set from the movie Blues Brothers. I had that set in my bedroom. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So it was always instruments around. Right. Instead of toys, I just go play with the instruments. I yeah. wasn't really big on toys. I like cars, that's about it, but yeah. as far as other toys and stuff, I wasn't big on it. I was, my toys were instruments. Right. So you just learn how to play and then once, once you know what I'm saying, that phase went away, I started buying my own instruments from the pawn shop. Right. I would save up my money buy my instruments and stuff and just sit at home and pray. It was just something I just loved to do because I used to be in the studio so much. Like, I was in a lot of sessions back this in the stage. This is regular life for you. This is regular seeing life. seeing everybody, I wanted to play every instrument I seen them play. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it was a way of life from Al Green sessions to Rufus Thomas sessions to Isaac Hayes sessions. You know what I'm saying? I was pulling up as a baby at, at Stacks back in when the real Stacks was open. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, like, like, like this brother right here, Mr. Porter, man, that's... Man, that's like, yeah. you know, that's like a mentor and a, and a, and a, and a, and a I mean, shit, he like everything to me, man. It's like a godfather, like everything. That's, that's and, them my, and them my folks, too, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you know what I'm saying? Like, these kid folks on greater community, B.B. Porter. My mama used to babysit them. My mama used to babysit them, bro. Yeah. yeah. My mama used to keep B.B. when he was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's but why I was, that's why I was, Melvin, you know, I, I, it was so important away. to have this conversation because you, like, like you will so much of that, you know what I'm saying? Right, of right, that right. Memphis history. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, what I was yeah. saying. Like uh, from the from the time of the ending of the Stacks era, right? Guys are being born right out of that era, the right. end of the era, and it spawned into something else. Right. right and then it right, takes right. me fast forward to the point where now the drum machines and shit like oh, this coming man. out. Like how was that? Because you 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 was playing it. You talking about analog and wires yeah, and everything, yeah. tape and everything. Even, even the first drum machine, because now you got to look at it. When we was with GTG, Fat Tony used to buy every drum machine that came out. We had the original 808, bro. Yeah. The yeah. original you first. We had the SP-12? We had the SP-12. No, we didn't have the SP-1200. The I SMK be, brought I mean, that, though. See, it's every, I SMK brought the same that. thing. Yeah. SMK coming through tomorrow. Yeah. So, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm oh, that's going to be, I'm going to tell you something about SMK, and I'm going to keep it short, man. Yeah. If it wasn't for SMK, he came in and he really taught Memphis how to work that bass. We didn't know how to really, really work that boom. Because if you listen to the early Memphis stuff, it didn't have all of that. You SMK you can that. hear it there. But yeah. we're talking about the feeling of actually putting it, playing with that low frequency. Right, right. Make, making it decay and all them different, you know what I'm saying, up and down. We wasn't doing all that. Memphis rap was more about instruments, live instruments, right. over them 808 beats. Yeah. But when he came, he chopped everything up. See what I'm saying? He wasn't using the instrument. He was chopping shit. So yeah. people started buying SP 1200s then. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, let me chop this. And so he kind of responsible. And I think after he came and set that mark, everybody just kind of followed that suit. You see what I'm saying? Because if you go back, every producer after him linked up with him in some kind of way. Yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he inspired that. And not only that, I think that it's just my personal opinion. I ain't trying to influence nobody else to think this way, but I think. Pop your shit, Nick. Joe C, Timberland. We talked about that. I think those guys. We're, we're going to talk about that too. SMK as well. Yeah, you see uh, what I'm saying? I told him a story. Uh, and it's funny because I talked to this nigga for like two hours on the phone yesterday. All right. And we were talking about my first, I was like 19, I was working at FedEx. Right. And I was in the hub and we were eating and shit. And there was a nigga in that joint and we was reading hip hop magazines and I'm in there selling my own CDs. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the nigga was telling the story. I was like, man, Timberland, we was to my producers. And my nigga was like, yo, bro, the whole, the nigga Timberland created this nigga SMK for the way he do his percussion style, bro. And, and he was got into this whole conversation. I don't know who the fuck SMK is. Right, I just remember right. these three letters. Mm -hmm. And so as we keep, as I get a little older in the game and I start, you know, mm -hmm. getting the information, right. this nigga, I told him, I was like, bro, you walk on water to me already because I'm a, I'm a big producer. Right, right, so right. 
it's some names of niggas, and right. your name is one of those as well. Right, 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 right. Producers that I paid attention to that was that was home from home. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, and right. even though he wasn't he wasn't born here, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. His, his story is crazy because he landed from up north somewhere and shit right. and ended up down here and, like you said, putting an organization. But he was traveling all 